know what a capacitor was, so he called it biogeometry. <laughs> you know, if you know what an electric field is, use the right language. Thank you very much. Phase times get dielectric. So here they produce about a 30% increase in growth, and they called it orgone, wrong term, but it's a very replicable experiment. So once you know how to make that electric field, here's some of the experiments we did. You put the seeds in paramagnetic stone geometry, they grow. You put the seeds in metal, they die. Very simple. And the reason they die here, if you put a capacitor in the center, this is your kids losing their soul in a steel building. Don't do it. Okay? If you put a capacitor in the center, you get only a couple harmonics. It's called harmonic, exclu harmonic exclusiveness. That produces death. That's why your modern hospital and most modern buildings are death traps. Because biologic plasma cannot breathe. Simple. Whereas here, if you put a capacitor in the center of a wooden cup or a stone cup where seeds will grow, you get harmonic inclusiveness. That's called fractality and non-destructive charge compression. And that's what creates light force, charge distribution, your plasma can breathe. So if your house is made of steel, your lucid dreaming is inhibited. If your house is made of biologic material, what they put between the layers of the orgone. We now know why a biologic material is biologic, because the molecules danced into a fractal because they like the look of that dance club. Yes? I was just going to ask you to say something about that shape you have up there, the tree of Yantra, where the seeds are doing really well. Is that a particularly good shape, um, fractal shape, or any fractal, any sacred geometric balanced shape? Well, the, the key is, remember, the, the three, three Yantra is the opposing cones, very nice and nine, um, the, any flower shape. One of the major issues is, you know, if you're not using biologic materials, which are phase conjugators, then don't worry about the geometry because it's fatal anyway. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's the geometry of the molecules inside the material that need to have the sacred geometry. So the choice of materials is more critical than anything else. But then, of course, the geometry of the, of the structure. So um, tomorrow, when we look at hundreds of slides of geobiology and geomancy and stone circles, We'll come back to your question. But the simple answer is lotus, a rose. <laughs> or, you know, when you install the labyrinth, you put it where the magnetic lines cross, the same place that will cause your compost pile to get warmer. And that's actually what creates sacred space. And we're going to show you here how we measure sacred space. So we're here to discuss the physics of this and render it as a shareable principle. And now what about steel movement? The whole country. Any geobiologist will tell you that steel in your house is going to kill you. Now, a little bit, you might survive the roof, but if you have steel vertical columns, <laughs> any geobiologist can tell you. Just like any homeopath can tell you that aluminum is going to kill just about any living thing. It's just the stupid architects and biologists who are still living in aluminum buildings would prove they don't know what architecture or biology is. <laughs> No, it's because, I think that's enough. <laughs> you see, let, let's understand the principle. Someone should ask, you know, well, the iron in steel is part of light. The bauxite in aluminum can be part of light. The thing is, the heat that put the bauxite into the aluminum came from an electric source. And so the geometry of that molecule is frozen out of charge distribution. That's called pain where the fractal bleed is the definition of all pain. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is where charge distribution is inhibited, and therefore compression is inhibited, and therefore light is inhibited. So basically, that molecule that stupid humans put into steel or aluminum has had its charge isolated. That was a mistake. That was a sin <laughs> against all of life. It's a sin that's going to have to be paid for. It is the definition of karma, to move charge out of fractality. That defines her. Absolutely. So whoever put that molecule into that aluminum or steel, some lifetime has to learn what pain that caused to fix it. Truly. So that's called charge isolation, defining pain. So basically, when you put your hand on aluminum, the reason your aura goes, oh shit, I'm going to die, <laughs> or steel, is because your aura says, oh hell, you know, all distribution is prevented there. And that's why you can't dream through it. Uh, and remember, later we're going to show the dreaming track and how they're measured electrically. And basically, it's a river of magnetic conductivity. You can measure with a phase conductive dielectric. 
where you go when you dream and you die is very measurable and it's very fractal and it's very good physics. So this, we don't, tomorrow we're going to do a whole hour on biologic architecture and we're going to show you that the design of temple and sacred space is how to build a capacitor that causes life. And that's bioengineering 101, there is no other. This. The stupa is a fractal capacitor. The word shen and shaman, I will raise a shaman to the Lord, and that altar in the church means high requires only fractal capacitor. A phase conjugating dielectric, able to make the electric field which causes life, the only definition of temple. So, um, I, I'm just going to finish this about the technology, a little quick intro, and then we're going to have open questions and then lunch. That's the plan, right? So we took, uh, here's a variety of these technologies. We talked about this one here. I took the gold cup you have there when you're passing around, and I put um, phase conjugate dielectric resin crystals inside. I make these resin crystals using that frequency signature I told you about and golden ratio, make the frequencies, crystallize the resin in a piezoelectric. And I got a very powerful, but 100 times more powerful than that. So you get that effect, except it's stronger and it's actually dangerous. <laughs> Accelerates metabolism. Not always good. <laughs> if anyone has Kundalini can tell you. <laughs> Accelerated metabolism has its limitations. But anyway, so if you put two of these things on the outside of a glass jar with fermenting yeast, Here's the effect on the antenna. And here's the measurement. Of the fermentation rate, 50%, 40 to 50% fermentation rate increase. The PhD chemists did this. It's, we replicated this. It's clear. So we made an electric field that caused metabolic increase. Very simple. It's, it's analog is, um, Redox potential in water, electron availability to react oxidation reduction potential, is fractality in water, and that you can measure cancer or not. If the water in your cell is fractal, you don't got cancer. If your water in your cell is person fractal, you do got cancer. It's called redox. Well, fractality in air hasn't been measured before, but now we know how. Charge distribution efficiency. So we made fractal air, and we can make life. Very simple. So that's how you make Stonehenge work. You spectrum analyze the capacitor, you build that electric field, fractal field, and you can reinvent all forms of metabolic accelerators, fermentation industries, yogurt, beer, wine, composting, digesters. You know, we can make a coating that's going to change the world, and that's, that's what breakthrough dash technology is one of the things. So that's called a phase conjugate dielectric because that's an electric field. Now I'm going to describe phase conjugate hydrodynamics and phase conjugate magnetics. This is phase conjugate hydrodynamics. This is called Schauberger's dream. <laughs> Remember Victor Schauberger? Yeah. Most of you have read it. And Callum Coates here locally wrote a bunch of books, good stuff. So when the vortex of water, about 50,000 RPM, had the right cone angle, and if the water had the right trace minerals open, it's electric, then the angle of that cone produced that's right. A lot of people here know. That's good that you know. Very appropriate. So here's, the, uh, here's a very crude sort of diagram of that device. There was a voltage difference between here and here. For the same reason, there's a voltage difference between here and here on a pine cone and on a living chicken egg. And that's called light. So when you make that vortex with the right angle, this was a generator that Hitler wrote the check. It wrote so good. It worked so good, you know. This was a generator. And this voltage came from gravity by being fractal. And that is not free energy, because there is no such thing. The gravitational field paid a price. Yes? And the, anybody who calls it free energy is proving that they, they're not responsible enough to use it, actually. I think free is an economic term. <laughs> Inappropriate, in my view. But anyway, it's not, you know, the Atlanteans thought it was free, too, until their continent fell over. <laughs> so, I, you know, I object to calling it free. In fact, I think our culture, if they continue to call it free, it ain't going to learn the lesson. But anyway, so that, that fractality, for example, the fractality of the fibers of Perkinjo electrically is how your heart gets the 